Okay, hello everyone. In our last class, we have been discussed Gauss law and app and its applications. We discussed the statement of the Gauss law, and we discussed the three applications. First one is you are to finding the electric field intensity at any point of a non-conducting charge flat sheet. Then we discussed electric field intensity of a parallel plate capacitor. If the point P will be uh, in between the plate and outside the plate, what will the values? And we discussed electric field intensity at any point due to linear charge distribution. In this class, we are going to discuss electric field at any point due to charged spherical cell. For that, we have to consider a spherical cell having radius r. Then consider let the cell is charged by q this total charge is distributed on the surface of the cell that we know this total charge is going to be the distributed on this surface you just imagine this is a 3d spherical surface this is not the circle this is the 3d spherical surface spherical surface and consider the cell that means inside this surface inside this surface this is the hollow Okay, so as we know that whenever we are going to apply the charge, any charge on a spherical cell, the all the charges are going to be distributed uniformly on the surface of the spherical cell. Okay, so this Q charge is uniformly distributed on this spherical surface of the spherical cell. Okay, now. First, we are going to consider case 1. If the point P is situated outside of the cell, that is your PO, which is the outside point PO, O means O for outside. If this point P is situated outside of this cell, then what will the electric field intensity at this point? For that, we are going to consider. A Gaussian surface to evaluate electric field intensity at P0 consider a Gaussian surface having radius R0 so this is the R0 is the radius of this Gaussian surface we have to consider that we can use the Gauss law okay so as I told this is the Gaussian surface we consider and the Gaussian surface is just passed through this point P observation point P named as PO PO o for outside by Gauss law we know that the total electric flux that is your phi e passed through the 3d spherical surface here 3d spherical surface is nothing but your Gaussian surface remember it represented by surface integration e dot ds here e means electric field intensity so electric field intensity we are trying to find out at the outside of the spherical cell so only for that it is notated as eo o for outside electric field intensity at point p so at point p point p is your outside point so only for that it is written as eo dot ds equal to q enclosed by epsilon 0 according to gauss law that we know that means if we are going to consider this is the Gaussian surface so surface integral of of the electric electric field that means surface integral of the electric lines of force which is passing through this surface is equal to q charge enclosed by this surface by epsilon 0 so here this integral surface integral represents the total flux that means total electric lines of force passing through this Gaussian surface red dotted line Gaussian surface will be equal to charged enclosed charged enclosed by this Gaussian surface by epsilon 0 according to Gauss law so here you can found as the charge Q is fully uniformly distributed over this uh, surface spherical surface 
surface of this spherical cell, then the electric lines of forces are coming out from the surface because these are the positive charges. So, you just concentrate on any one of the positive charge here. So, from this positive charge, lines of force will be along this direction, this direction. So, lines of forces are coming out from the surface of the spherical cell is like this and passing and passed through the Gaussian surface like this. Okay. So, at any point, at any point if I am going to consider a small surface on this Gaussian surface. So, suppose this one a small ds surface here you can see this is a ds and as, as I told that these lines are usual electric field intensity lines coming out from the surface of the cell. So, consider a small area ds here obviously the direction of ds will be along this direction normal to this ds we can found from the figure that <coughs> the angle between electric field intensity and ds both are same or angle between uh, angle between both the vectors e and ds is equal to 0 degree that means direction both have the same direction and parallel also that means angle between them is 0 degree so this electric field intensity as we are uh, trying to find out the electric field intensity at the point outside of the cell so this is named as eo eo so eo dot ds here ds we considered at any point on the surface on the surf on the gaussian surface that is your ds angle between them if it is zero then dot product of these two will be how much eo into ds into cos 0 d that means cos 0 is your 1 so eo is a constant taken outside surface integration of ds okay okay will be equal to charge enclosed by epsilon 0 the most important this charge enclosed means how much charge enclosed by the gaussian surface okay so here you can see this dotted line this red dotted line is the gaussian surface gaussian surface encloses the total en entire spherical cell and spherical cell is charged by q so obviously this gaussian surface is enclosing the charge q so charge enclosed by the gaussian surface here charge enclosed means enclosed by gaussian surface remember enclosed by gaussian surface is your q q by epsilon 0 right okay now if we are going to consider total surface area that means total surface area of this gaussian surface will be how much here this is the this is the sphere having the radius r0 r o r o r o for outside okay r o so obviously total surface area will be 4 pi r o square so e o r o 4 pi r o square equal to q by epsilon 0 okay that implies e o electric field intensity outside point that means at point p o will be equal to this one 4 pi r o square coming to the denominator uh, of the RHS and we found 1 by epsilon 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r o square okay finally this is the answer if the point situated outside of the cell now we are going to go for if the point will be on the surface of the cell here in this situation P is outside the cell, P point on the surface. So, as the point P came on the surface, it is named as PS point on the surface. So, subscript S, PS. Okay. And radius obviously will R because initially we considered the radius of the cell is your R. So, here 
now the point p and the center distance will be capital r okay same thing it has written in this case ps on the surface hence radius of the gaussian surface okay uh, so the distance between uh, r sorry center to ps will be r so now we are going to find out the electric field intensity at point ps which is on the surface for that we have to consider a gaussian surface gaussian surface always remember that gaussian surface has to pass through the observation point so here this dotted red line passing through passed just passed through this point we can say that this gaussian surface is on the surface of the cell okay if it is so then the radius of this gaussian surface will be r capital r same thing it has been written so in this case ps on the surface hence the radius of the gaussian surface will be r equal to r see whatever i written this is the note for your exam this is enough for your exam no need to write the extra okay this much is enough for your exam okay so by gauss law we know that total electric flux passed through the 3d spherical surface here 3d spherical surface is nothing but gaussian surface having the radius is your r is equal to mathematically es ds es means electric field intensity on the surface dot ds charge enclosed equal to charge enclosed by epsilon 0 okay now here you can see that if we are going to consider any point on this uh, gaussian surface suppose here and consider a elementary surface suppose ds so ds direction will be perpendicular to the plane along this direction and this vector this vector represents the electric field intensity vector due to the surface charge of the uh, spherical cell so here these are the charges are present on the surface of the sphere so if we are going to consider a gaussian surface exactly on the surface of the spherical cell then obviously these lines of forces the electric fluxes will pass through this gaussian surface so here you can see that if this one is your electric lines of force passing through this gaussian surface and ds is the any element on the gaussian surface and this element direction will be along this direction and es also along the same direction so here you can see electric lines of force along this direction that is your es direction and considering a element on this gaussian surface ds suppose its direction also the same direction that means angle between es and ds will be zero so here considering the dot product cos 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 zero will be equal to one so es is a constant taken outside into surface integration of ds will be equal to charged enclosed here you can see this gaussian surface encloses the entire spherical cell which is charged by q obviously this gaussian surface is enclosing the total charge q so this enclosed means enclosed charge by the gaussian surface is nothing but q by epsilon 0 and the total surface area of this gaussian surface will be how much 4 pi r square because gaussian surface having the radius is your r so surface area will be obviously 3d surface area will be obviously 4 pi capital r square q by epsilon 0 so electric field intensity on the surface of this spherical cell will be how much 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square okay 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 so here i uh, i suggest to you uh, one of the one thing that in your exam this steps no need to derive here you can see for case one for case one if we are going to consider the distance from the center of the cell to po equal to r0 and the value equal to q by r 
O R O square R O this is O R O square. So if this point P will be come to the surface of the spherical cell, then R O will be equal to R. So here you can write E S equal to one by four pi epsilon zero Q by Q by capital R square. Direct you can write for your exam. No problem. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to go for the third case. Third case, if the point P will be inside the cell, here point P inside the cell, so it is named as P i distance from the center to P i is your R i to find out the electric field intensity at P i, we consider a Gaussian surface having the radius R i like this. Okay, this one is the Gaussian surface dotted red. Here you can see. If we are going to consider this Gaussian surface, how much charge has been enclosed? That is zero because all the charges is situated on the surface of the spherical cell. So, by this uh, Gaussian surface, the charge enclosed is zero. Inside this sur inside this Gaussian surface, there is no charge. All the charges on the surface of the spherical cell. So according to Gauss law, uh, total flux equal to charge enclosed by epsilon zero. Here charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is equal is equal to zero. So obviously electric field intensity at any point inside the spherical spherical cell will be equal to zero. Same thing it has been written in this case P i on the surface. Hence radius of Gaussian surface is R i by Gauss law total electric flux passed through the 3D spherical surface here see here 3D spherical surface means 3D Gaussian spherical surface equal to total flux equal to Q uh, enclosed by epsilon 0 Q enclosed that means total charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface is 0 so hence this value will be 0 so obviously EI will be equal to 0 here we found now we are going to uh, represent graphically the variation of electric field intensity with distance. We found at any point outside the electric field intensity, suppose this this, this one is your uh, um, uh, charged spherical cell, so three Gaussian surfaces are this one. At P O one Gaussian surface, at P S another Gaussian surface, at P I another Gaussian just three Gaussian surfaces you can found in this single single figure so at any point outside the value is this one at any point on the surface of the spherical cell the value of electric field intensity is this one inside it is zero so if we are going to go for the graphical representation of the electric field intensity you can found the maximum value is this one the maximum value is this one because here you can see uh, by comparing these these two uh, expressions 1 by 4 pi epsilon is the common q is the common here r0 is greater than r so obviously this value is less so this value is maximum and this value is 0 so this value we found on the surface that means this one is the maximum this one is the maximum value at exactly r and r this value is maximum okay this much value suppose this value this much value along y axis along y axis we consider e and along x axis we consider distance from the center so suppose this height is this value which is situated on the surface of the charged spherical cell now inside the value is zero inside this value is zero but outside outside this value is this entire is your constant that means e0 is inverse proportional to r0 square that means as we are going to move away from the center of the away from the surface of the uh, spherical cell the electric field intensity is gradually decreases uh, with square of the distance that means it will be like this as going to move away from the surface of this spherical charged cell 
then the electric field intensity will be gradually decreases which is proportional to 1 by r r 0 square proportional to distance inverse proportional to distance square of the distance so this side also same type of behavior we can follow so this is all about your electric field at a point or at any point due to charged cell here we discussed outside how much on the surface how much and inside the surface how much this is one long question uh, for six mark you have to write the uh, write this one perfectly in your note and prepare well in our next class we are going to discuss electric field at a point due to charged solid sphere so this is a charged solid sphere means if we are going to consider a solid sphere and if we are going to give a charge q charge that means it will be distributed entire this is this as it is a solid no so it is entire inside the solid so uniformly distributed uniformly distributed uh, inside the volume itself but previous one it is hollow so all the charges will be distributed on the surface so as it is a solid so all the charges uniformly distributed inside the volume here inside the on the surface uniformly distributed inside the volume it is uniformly distributed in detail we are going to discuss in our next class thank you so much for watching this video thank you